everybody, before we get this review started, I just want to say, throughout this review, I will probably be referring a lot to how I felt about the old Jungle Book movie, because I recently did a review on the original Jungle Book animated movie by Disney, and so now I'll probably be doing some comparing and contrast. It's not necessary for you to watch this to get this review, but uh, it might help. So if you want to, you can watch that first, then watch this one, or you don't have to watch it all. Either way, let's talk about The Jungle Book. It's late in the time and we're gonna do I'm Lazy Dude 99. I am here with another Lazy Dude 99 movie review, and today we are looking at Disney's The Jungle Book, directed by John Favreau. So this is another one of Disney's movies that they've been doing recently of remaking their classic. Uh, stories into live action adaptations. Now, unlike some of them that I, I really don't have really any interest in, uh, I didn't really care for Cinderella too much, didn't really feel a whole lot of love for that one, I'm not really excited for any of the other ones that are coming out. I mean, there's a Beauty and the Beast remake, I don't need it, I've already got the perfect Beauty and the Beast. But there are some movies in the Disney animated lineup that I thought really did warrant a live action movie of it that could improve on the story and for a re modern retelling of the story and you know what I thought Jungle Book was definitely one of them if you saw my animated look back on the original Jungle Book movie you might remember that I felt the movie is fine but overall just it doesn't age well compared with superior animated movies so I was actually really looking forward to a remake and a reimagining of it and let me just say for the most part they got all of my gripes with that film, they fixed them all. I'm like surprised how well they fixed them. But let's start with the basic story. Mowgli is a boy who is raised in the jungle by a pack of wolves, and one day when the water is down, all the predators and all the prey decide to put a truce. Maybe this is the uh, prequel to Zootopia. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, they decide to have a truce by the watering hole because there's not a whole lot of water, so let's not bloody the water, so to speak. So they all come in there, the wolves go, all the animals are there, and Shere Khan the tiger arrives. Shere Khan absolutely hates men and therefore wants Mowgli, even though he's not technically a man, he is a man cub, wants Mowgli dead. But he respects the truce, so he puts it out there. As soon as this truce is over, as soon as the rains come back, I'm going to kill that boy. And you wolves, you might want to protect him, but a lot of you are going to die if you try. So Mowgli volunteers to leave the jungle, and Bagheera takes him back to, is trying to take him back to the man village. Along the way, they come across different characters and different uh, obstacles to overcome. So let's just talk about the biggest and best improvement of from the on the original story is the main character, Mowgli. Mowgli is played by a new actor called Neil Seethi, and let me just say that, as I said in my animated look back, the original Mowgli was a dull main character. He was boring, and he didn't really have that much of a character. I felt that he was just a catalyst. They were moving him from here to here to here just so we could spend time with the more interesting side characters, but not actually spend any development on the, the main character. Here, all of my problems are addressed that I had with the old Mowgli. Uh, we get his reasoning. He decides to leave the pact for their safety. He takes responsibility for himself. He also explains to Bugira why he doesn't want to leave the jungle. We see, hear his fears of man, what man is like, and how he's been told his whole life to stay away from man, and now he's like supposed to go and be that. We hear all of the, his his uh, fears, and but he also understands that there's a tiger coming after him. You know, he doesn't just brush that off. He doesn't just say, <laughs> whatever, like the old one did. He knows that there is danger, and that he, there is stuff to you know, be afraid of. And he knows there's other stuff like that. He is an energetic kid. We can see he's a very energetic and smart kid. And they also bring the human intelligence into this. And I love that because, you know, animals can are, are smart in their own right, but they're nothing compared to human intelligence. You know, I don't see an animal with a YouTube channel that isn't a cat, and that's still assisted by humans. 
But the human mind obviously can think of different ways of handling a problem that an animal can't. I love that they address that. He's a smart kid. He's figuring out all these inventive ways to make things easier. And the other animals are like, no, don't do that. That's not how we do things in the animal kingdom. That's not how we do things here in the jungle. And he's just like, oh, okay, uh, I guess. But he's just like, you know, they're, they're, people are trying to hold him back. And, and it's just like, no, he's a bright kid and thinking of all these ways. And I think that's when certain characters, like when Baloo comes into the picture, he encourages Mowgli. He's like, yeah, do this stuff. This is awesome. If you can do something better than another animal, then just do it. Don't worry about them not feeling that it's right or their weight. They don't have to like it. So, first point that I give to this movie, Mowgli is 100% improved. The, the kid actor does a great job. He's carrying this film. You know, like, the, the other actors and more seasoned actors are all doing voice work. I don't know if they ever even met him besides doing press stuff, you know? It's very possible that until they're going on the road, you know, uh, advertising this movie and whatnot, that he didn't see any of them. That these guys, these big stars and celebrities didn't even show up on set. Now, they could have. I'm just saying that, you know, it'd be very easy for these other actors and actresses who have a lot of stuff on their plate to just say, oh, uh, I might meet him once or twice, but not actually spend any time with him. And the kid works well, because you gotta remember, he's not working off of anybody other than maybe a hand puppet. And you know what? Working off of just puppets isn't easy. What do you mean? Crow, can we not do this now? Sir Crow. Okay, fine. Sir Crow. But can we just uh, not do this right now? I'm in the middle of something. Hm. I bet nobody is watching. I just got 2,000 subscribers! By the way, thanks for subscribing. But anyway, it's not easy, you know, in some moments, I, I, there were some moments where I thought, well, I don't know if that's good. I'm like, no way, that's how a kid would act, you know, that's how a kid would sound, you know. It's not the most dramatic or, you know, or, you know, it, it, sometimes you just, the kids just got to act like a kid. And you know what, I think he does a great job. My second biggest problem with the old classic that they really did a great job was... The villain. Now, uh, don't get me wrong, Shere Khan was a great villain in that movie. My biggest problem was there wasn't enough of him. You know, he didn't feel like a, uh, they just talked about him a lot, but he didn't have a threatening presence. This Shere Khan, my gosh! Richard Parker is really going off the deep end. I'm sorry if that offended anybody, but uh, okay. I just see Tiger, Richard Parker, uh, Life of Pi. That, that's what I was going Anyway. He's played by Idris Elba in this, and my gosh, this guy has a great voice for villain, you know? It's just really dark and menacing, and it's really good. Like, it's just, he has a presence from the very beginning of the movie. When he walks up and he's, like, walking around. He, I love how they animate this, because, you know, most everything, except for maybe Neil, is animated in this movie. It's just like, he... The way he approaches everything, he has... You can tell that he has an ideology, you know? He's not just, like, the previous one he wanted to kill Mowgli. Why? I don't know. And here he's, like, he has a... Once again, it's shown, not told. And the old one, they just said, oh, he hates man. And the, here they show, you know, they show why he hates man. They show how he, what he wants to do to Mowgli and why. And I, I think that's a great job. The villain has a presence. And the villain actually does stuff. You know, the other one, where he, you know, he's a, he's menacing, but we don't actually see him do anything that evil. This one, oh my gosh, great. Like, I, I, there was a moment where I'm just like, he's about to pop up, isn't he? He's going to pop up. He's going to pop up. But, ah, gosh darn it, I knew he was going to. But that's just the movie sucking you in. And even when you can think of things, things ahead, and I, I had some moments where I was like, oh, they're probably going to go with this, with that, and I was proved right. But the digital effects work on everything is great. The only thing that I can say I kind of have a little bit of a problem with is how some of the characters are made humongous. You know, I mean, like, it seems like King Louis has been drinking whatever the Michael Bay Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have been drinking. Because he's like the size of a, a trailer. I'm just like, look, I'm pretty sure the, like, he's, he's, a, he's looking like King Kong's little brother here, okay? Just a couple of 
20, 50 feet higher, maybe he became God's size. I don't know. I'm not great with measurements. And uh, Ka, Ka was much larger. Um, I guess you know. I liked I liked the scene because the scene was good. Uh, it was a little bit of an exhibit. Ka's scene was a little bit of an exhibition done, but it was done well. I think it was it was done pretty well. Although uh, she tells Mowgli something, and in my mind, I'm thinking, well, how would you know? But you know, it's something that it's not like a, a guarded secret or anything. It's just probably. Is she could probably hear it around, but you know what? All the people lending their voices to these characters uh, were great. You know, I I I thought that I was going to hear the actor behind the microphone, and I didn't. You know, when when Ka showed up, I wasn't thinking, oh, that's Scarlett Johansson. When Ben Kingsley was doing um, Bagheera, and I thought from the trailers that I wasn't. I th when I what from what I saw from the trailer, I'm like I I'm not gonna buy it. I, you know, I I'm gonna hear the guy behind the microphone, but I didn't. I I really felt that he was the character that was there. And Bill Murray, I thought that I Bill Murray has a voice that's so distinct that it'd be so easy to just pick it out and and you know separate that from the character. But I didn't really. I, I accepted his character. He was great as Baloo. Although I always thought that John Goodman should have been Baloo just because I always thought that's who it was in the original animated one, but it wasn't. It just it was a voice that was similar to me. But anyway, the only one that I would say I, I could really separate the voice from the character and it was like really like it was hard for me to like see that there was one character that I could see the voice and I could see the character who was separate was Christopher Walken as King Louie. It's just as Christopher Walken, you know. It's hard to it's hard to get another perception. You know, if he voices an animated character, I'm just picturing him doing the voice in a sound booth. Two mice fell into a bucket of cream. Anyway, but you know what I mean? It's just like, he has such a distinct voice that it, it, it didn't really encompass the character for me. Especially with how large he is, you know? This is a big, humongous ape, and he's just like, Mowgli, help me out of my fire. But that was also great, too, with how they handled fire. You know, fire was like the destruction. Fire represents the power and responsibility of being a man. That's what fire really represents in this movie. It is how man has its power, because they have fire. But it's also how, you know, if you let your responsibilities and you let things slide, it, or if you just take your eyes off for one second, it could destroy you. And I think that's it's a good uh, symbo a symbolic. It's really good at being symbolic. I like that. Oh, what can else I can say? There's action scenes in here, and uh, the one at the end I found like a little predictable, but there were, it took some turns that I wasn't, you know, expecting. I'm like, oh yeah, oh, that's that's interesting. The elephants, the elephants were like my biggest problem, second only to the vultures, in the original animated one, because there's they just had scenes that went on too long. They weren't funny, so I'm like, how, what are they gonna do with the elephants? How are they gonna make them interesting? Don't give them a line. Just make them really mysterious, and like these wandering wizards throughout the ge the jungle. That's what it feels like, you know. Whenever they show up, it's like they're there, and everyone else is just like, "Stay still, don't move, show your respect." And there we go. You know, it's really it's like all the animals held such reverence for the elephants, and and they they it actually makes them really cool. You know, you're like, wow. They're actually really interesting, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, I want to see more about them. It's like my, my biggest complaint with the last movie of the elephants, how not funny and how their scenes went on too long. It's just I wanted those scenes to go on longer because they had such power behind them. John Favreau did a great job directing. The fact that most of this is shot on green screen, I mean, that's absolutely incredible. I mean... I, 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 it, it feels like you're in the jungle, and none of it, it ever really feels fake. Well... The only thing that I get, I don't know why, but whenever they showed a deer, I'm like, that deer doesn't look right. I don't know why, it was always just the deer that, whenever, like, you'd be, show, okay, uh, you know, gazelles, okay, a porcupine, or not porcupine, whatever that is, I, I don't know if it might be a porcupine, uh, that's okay, the, the tiger looks amazing. P.S., one more thing on, on uh, Shere Khan, I love how when, when they introduce Shere Khan, they introduce him by having just vultures coming closer. The vultures know that just wherever Shere Khan goes, death is going to follow. So they just follow him. That was like 
really symbolic, really great there. But anyway, yeah, the deer, uh, they were the only ones that I, I really felt were off for some reason. I don't know, maybe I'm just uh, seeing things, but that's the only one. Now you might ask, did the old one do anything better in my mind? Uh, two things, they're not humongous, because I would say this new one is definitely in a different league than the old one. This is way better. All, almost all of my problems with the old one were fixed in this one. There's two things I think the old one did better. One, I think it was Baloo trying to say to Mowgli, uh, I think that you need to go to the man village. That was one. Because in the old one, Baloo just tries to explain, look, I think it might be better if you were in the man village because you'd be safer there. And Mowgli freaks out and runs away. In here, he's like, uh, when Bagheera says, well, you got to convince him to come uh, with me because otherwise he's not going to be safe. He's like, Okay. And then he just goes and says to Mogu, like, yeah, we're never friends. I don't even like you. Go away. Get out of here. Pfft. And I'm just like, oh, come on. That's forced. And since they don't really have any resolution scene, it's really pointless. You know, you could have just had him go up to Mowgli and say, look, I think it might be better if you go with Bagheera and Mowgli being mad. Like, you said that we would be able to do all this together and that we'd be friends. And he's like, I know, but I think you would probably be safe. And you know, you're going to have Mowgli get mad at that. That'd be reasonable. But you kind of make Baloo look like a jerk for really no reason. And you didn't need that. But beyond that, there's only a couple of other things that really kind of bothered me. Uh, every What can I say? This movie is great. Uh, I think kids can see it. I think it's a great family movie. It's a way bigger improvement on the original one. The main character is interesting. The side character is interesting. Only one character I didn't really like. And that song, the second song, <laughs> was very jarring. Yeah, that, that, that second song was just like, no, don't know. No, this isn't right. This is not right. But beyond that, it's an improvement on the original one in every way possible. I give it definitely a two thumbs up for this one. What is my rating going to be? I think. And so, in the end, I gotta give John Favreau's The Jungle Book. 7 out of 10. I really don't have too many complaints about this movie other than those that I've mentioned. <laughs> I think it's great. I think it's fun. It's definitely entertaining. There's The characters work off of each other really well. There's nothing in it that I really despise. I think it's a great movie, and definitely one I recommend you see. And, and as I said, if you got kids, definitely show them. There's some intense scenes, true, but nothing that, you know, a quick drive to 7-Eleven to get a Slurpee you wouldn't solve. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, that's my review. Adios. Be sure to check out more of my other videos on my channel, and wait for more coming soon. And so, in the end, well...